And I were in a Sunday school class and somebody cried out from the back, I read in the scriptures it says neither power nor lender be. <laughs> oh, that was awful. Who said it? Come on. Thelonious. Was he a good guy or a bad guy? Good guy. Bad guy. Oh, he was a bad guy. guy. Oh, he was a bad guy. And Shakespeare was good with that. He'd bring out all the good stuff through some really awful characters. But that's, that's not what we're going to do. Part of what some of you got in your email was the St. Christmas Day speech. And Dave says, here, read this and get me into it. A, I can't read his handwriting. I couldn't do it justice of one reading. But this guy lives and breathes Shakespeare. Please, let's listen to it. <laughs> well, it's October 25th, 1450. It's before the Battle of Agincourt. This is all recounted in Henry V. Shakespeare wrote it roughly 200 years later. And uh, it's the pre-battle speech of King Henry to his forces. Much of what he said is recorded in history, and Shakespeare followed it reasonably closely. There was uh, an argument that Henry made to the effect that uh, although they were severely outnumbered, it was better because that meant the fewer men the greater share of honor if they won. He also put some puns in there. Uh, uh, you can ask me afterwards which ones you think were the puns. <laughs> I, am, I have my uh, my opinions, but uh, you get into it by a series. It's it's as though the uh, knights are standing around a fire with their cup of coffee in a styrofoam container, <laughs> basically talking about how bad the odds were and what how difficult <clears throat> the situation was. So uh, one of them says. Of fighting men, they have full three score thousand. That's five to one. And another says, those are fearsome odds. And besides, they are all fresh. And then the Duke of Westmoreland says, oh, that we now have here, but one ten thousand of those gentlemen in England that shall do no work today. Now, why would they do no work today? Because it was St. Christmas Day. It was a Catholic holiday in honor of two cobbler priests, Crispin and Christian. And there was no work done that day. There were feasts held instead. There were, there were, there, nobody was going to work in England, and they needed those men for the army. They were outnumbered five to one. And the king, as he was coming back from viewing the battlefield, heard the Duke of Westmoreland say, oh, that we now have here those, but one ten thousand of those men in England that shall do no work today. And he said, What's he that wishes so, my cousin Westmoreland? No, my fair cuz, if we are marked to die, we are enough to do our country loss. But if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. God's will, I pray thee, wish not one man more. Rather proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made, and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Christian. He that sees this day and comes safe home shall rouse him at the name of Christian and stand a tiptoe when this day is named. He that sees this day and lives old age shall yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say, Tomorrow is St. Crispian's. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Crispian's day. Now, old men forget. But all shall be forgot, yet he'll, yet he'll remember, with advantages, what deeds he did that day. Then shall our names, familiar in his mouth as household words, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, Exeter, be in their flowing cups, freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son. And Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day unto the ending of the world. But we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so vile. This day shall gentle his condition, and gentlemen in England, now abed, <clears throat> shall think themselves accursed they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap 
while Sandy speaks to talk with us upon St. Crispin's Day.